Hello, everyone. Bienvenidos. Welcome. We are so excited to welcome you to our webinar called Our Stories, Our Health, Moving from Vaccine Hesitancy to Preparedness in the Latino Community. And what's even more exciting is that we're welcoming the month of October together, and we're doing it in the middle of Hispanic Heritage Month. So it is such a pleasure to be here with you today. My name is Paulina Sosa. I am the founder and CEO of Latinx Voces and the president of the Latinx Task Force. So it's again, just such a pleasure to be here with you today. And we really are in for a treat because we've got some real exciting um, presenters. We got some exciting resources and information as we get ready for holiday season. So again, just wishing everyone a very happy Hispanic Heritage Month. As y'all can see, we also do have our very own mascot and sidekick, Lobito, joining us for the duration of this webinar. So um, he will be with us throughout the, the presentation. I also want to make a very special thank you um, to Pfizer because this webinar has been brought to you by Pfizer. We could not do this without the support and the collaboration of Pfizer. So we are very grateful that we're able to do this. And again, all of this being done in the name of health education information as we prepare for the respiratory season up ahead. So just a few housekeeping notes I wanted to share. Um, as you all can see, we do have our chat open. We really want to encourage and welcome everyone to share in the chat your name, your organization, if you're here as an organization representative, um, whether you are a promotore. Um, we also would love to hear if you're just here as, an, as a member of the community. We'd love to hear what city and state you're from as well, just to get a sense of the community that is with us. We also are going to encourage everyone to engage with the conversation by participating in live polls during this session. So actually, speaking of, we do have our first poll of the day going live to you now, and we'd love to just hear your thoughts on these questions. So feel free to participate if you're able. Also, if you have any technical questions, please message us in the chat for support. We really want to address any audio or video issues you may be running into. So feel free to message one of our Latinx Voices team members to help you with those tech issues. Uh, fourth, we also want to let you know that this webinar is being recorded and will be shared post-event. So we will be sending a post-event email to make sure that you have this recording as a reference and a resource, and you can share it with friends, family, colleagues, other members of your staff. Last but not least, we want to encourage you to stay connected with us even after this webinar. Stay connected with us during this webinar. The hashtag for our webinar today is hashtag our stories, our health, and we are at Instagram and Facebook at Latinx Voices LLC. So there's multiple ways to engage, multiple ways to share your questions and to share your feedback. With that, I am particularly excited to welcome our keynote speaker of the day. So we have Delmi Allen, the Community Engagement Specialist with Pfizer's Vaccine Adoption and Equity. So I'm gonna pass the floor to Zelmi to share uh, her opening remarks with us and um, kick off the webinar. Hi everyone, good afternoon. Uh, thank you Paulina so much and thank you Latinx Voices for having us here today. I am so excited to be here. And as you mentioned, I am part of Pfizer's community engagement team. I'm very proud to be part of this great team and a big part of our work it focuses on making um, educational resources available for all and accessible for all around the importance of vaccines. My specialization is in vaccines and their impact on overall health. Um, at Pfizer, we believe that education is a major step uh, towards empowering communities to take charge of their own health. Today, I aim to provide information to help support you in making well-informed decisions, not only for you, but for your community. Uh, Thank you again, and I look forward to uh, learning more as you are as you all. And uh, Paulina, I'll, I'll send it back to you. Great, thanks so much, Selmi. And again, a very special thank you to you and to your team for all the work that you do in ensuring that we can get information out into the community. 
Um, so this kind of brings me to a little section. I wanted to share a little bit about who we are here at the task force. What is the Luchad Health Initiative? And really just, again, give an opportunity to everyone listening in on what this initiative is about and how you can engage. So this is just to set up the conversation with our amazing panelists. Um, so first, the Latinx Task Force is the nonprofit health branch of Latinx Voces. And its mission is essentially to address health disparities and improve access to health information in the Latinx community through education, through partnership, and through community. These are very key pillars that we believe are critical to ensuring equity in our community. So what is Luchad? And again, as you can see, we have our wonderful friend Lobito joining us for the ride here. So a very quick recap that we started a national tour in collaboration with the Juntos y Podemos campaign during the pandemic. So this feels like forever ago, but really it was only about two years ago. And I think there's actually a few partners on the call with us who were a part of this tour. And actually the stories, the engagement and the feedback that we heard from partners during this tour is really what led to the development of an initiative like this. So again, we had to identify communities. We had to develop key partnerships in those communities. We had to listen to communities. And I'm sure there's many of us in the call that have to do work like this on a regular day-to-day -day basis, even post pandemic, right? And we'd love to hear about community engagement work you do in the chat as well. So please share you know, any feedback that you've seen in, in working in the community. We had to also listen to partner needs. And that is part of one of the critical components of the task force. We listen to you, to the partners, because you are the trusted messengers in your community. And last but not least, all of these stories, all of this feedback is what led to the Luchad Health Initiative. So Luchad, as any great initiative has, Luchad stands for, it, it's an acronym. So it stands for Leading and Uniting Comunidades or Communities Through Health, Awareness, and Resources. And the way that we do that is by identifying the top health topics that are critical to the Latino community, again, through the stories and the feedback that we had throughout the tour, and then also identifying key health strategies. So for the purpose of this webinar, we are focused on infectious disease. We are very cognizant that with respiratory season upon us, and I'm sure many of us, including myself, I, I was dealing with a cold a few weeks ago, Many of us have probably already started to see an uptick in different infectious diseases, maybe the flu, maybe COVID, maybe just the common cold or RSV in our communities, right? Maybe you have dealt with it on a personal level. And so we are aware that respiratory season is upon us and we want to be prepared for the holidays so we can spend it with our families. And the strategies that are included in the chat are First and foremost, talking about trusted messengers. And one of the biggest ones, and I'd love again to see in the chat if there are any community health workers, promotores with us, um, because you all are trusted messengers in the community. So this is one of those key strategies that has emerged in order to address health disparities in our community. Language and cultural competency, partners, community engagement, and social determinants of health. So Luchad is a very large initiative. There's a lot involved in it. And so we're excited to be able to put this webinar together in order to address, again, the infectious disease component. All of this is to build a framework that is easily accessible for partners, for families, and for decision makers in order to better understand how to work with Latino communities, and again, how to improve and ensure health equity is accomplished. So we do that around policy, data, and funding, and at the core is culture, language, and community. So that is just a little bit about what the Luchad Health Initiative is, and we'd love to hear if you're interested to collaborate with us. We are always open to bring on new partners into our coalition, so just let us know. Um, but really, the essence of this is the power of partnerships, storytelling, and community. And that's really what brings us to this exciting panel today. So again, I'm Paulina. I'm the moderator of our conversation today. And our two amazing speakers with us, we have Zelmi Allen from Pfizer's Vaccine Adoption and Equity. And we have Marlene Ramirez 
our uh, program director from Vaccinate Your Family. So first, just to do a brief bio, Zomi Allen is a passionate public health professional dedicated to health equity and strategic program development, currently serving as a community engagement specialist for Pfizer's Vaccine Adoption and Equity Team in Texas. She collaborates with local organizations to promote vaccine equity in marginalized communities. With a Master in Public Health from the University of Texas Health and Science Center, Zelmi is also a certified community health worker instructor in Texas and holds relevant certifications in public health. She was recently accepted into the Claremont Graduate University Doctor of Public Health Program, yay, that began in August 2024. And we also have Madeline Ramirez, who is the program coordinator at Vaccinate Your Family, and she supports Vaccinate Your Family's advocacy and education work. Madeline is also an experienced community health worker and a community health worker instructor. She is a passionate advocate for health promotion and health equity, evidenced by her work with CHWs and the development of a community health programs in border cities along Southwest Texas. As a CHW, Madeline has served as a navigator, connecting individuals to public health resources and helping them make informed medical decisions. As a CHWI, she has significantly improved health education in the communities she serves. And it is for those reasons we are so excited to hear from both of these amazing panelists. And so first, I'm going to pass the floor to Zelmi to share with us her resources from her team. Zelmi, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Paulina. Let me go ahead and share um, the PowerPoint. Thank you again for having me here today. And as Paulina mentioned, I am with Pfizer's Vaccine Adoption and Equity Team. Um, and I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about who we are. Uh, our team is small but mighty. I uh, hear my lovely coworkers um, in Georgia and Philadelphia area. So we uh, strive to drive vaccine equity uh, through strategic focus and underrepresented communities. Uh, we acknowledge that um, their systemic barriers. And those systemic barriers can prevent a lot of our community members to access healthcare, to access uh, vaccination. So uh, partnering with grassroots organizations, with community-based and faith-based organizations is the way that we believe that we can make an impact in addressing some of these barriers. Um, just a little bit about the work that I've done here in Texas. My main focus is on the Latino community. Um, I've worked with the Mexican consulate, with their binational health fair every year here in, in the Dallas area, with uh, the South Texas Promotoras Association, which has been, um, if you're from Texas, you know that North Texas and South Texas um, have not much in common common besides being in Texas, right? So uh, it's been such a pleasure to get to know these ladies and their just passion for the work um, and the health of their communities. Uh, we work with the Hispanic Wellness Coalition, uh, Dia de la Mujer Latina out in Houston, uh, Rosa es Rojo, which is a program that dedicates uh, a lot of their work um, around uh, breast cancer awareness in the Latino community. So as you see, a lot of our work is not only with specific organizations that only focus on vaccines, but focus on preventative health. And that kind of drives us into um, our next section here, which talking to community, taking community health into our own hands. A lot of the times we hear prevention is the best medicine, but what does that entail? What does that equation look like? Uh, having healthy behaviors, um, a lot of the programs that we see with our community partners are eat healthy, stay active, right? Don't smoke, limit drinking, um, and also talks about preventative care in a way of getting your medical and dental checkups every year, getting screened to prevent uh, chronic disease, um, staying up to date on recommended vaccinations, uh, depending on your age group needs to be more uh, in that conversation. A lot of the times, depending on where in um, the country you're at, sometimes these conversations tend to be a little more politicized or taboo. So we're hoping that by bringing um, awareness and education to these issues, we can kind of bridge that gap. 
So um, a little bit about vaccines, right? To getting uh, some in, into that hesitancy piece. Um, vaccines are one of the greatest success stories in public health. Um, they, they help uh, defend against certain diseases eradicated uh, smallpox worldwide and eliminated wild polio virus in the United States. Um, this, I think this is my favorite and the most shocking to a lot of community members and organizations that I've talked to in the past is that is vaccines save more human lives than any other medical invention in history. And every time I talk about this, people are like, that can be right, right? Or like, that's amazing. Um, it also brought down to an all-time low the number of people getting sick or dying from certain vaccine-preventable uh, diseases. So um, I always like to highlight the importance of vaccines and how um, they've been uh, changed uh, our communities uh, for a very long time. So one of the things that helps address some of this hesitancy, uh, some of the questions that I always get in the field is how do vaccines work? Like, what do they do? Um, a lot of the times that health literacy piece is so important when talking to communities about how does it work in your body? What do vaccines uh, prepare you for? So I have a, a short video that I, I like to share um, with communities and community organizations that are doing the work. I'm a pretty healthy person, and I don't get sick a lot. I wonder why I still need vaccines to help prevent infections. Great question. Our immune systems are amazing at protecting our bodies. But even a healthy immune system needs training to help protect against potentially dangerous infections. That's why a vaccine is like a coach. It teaches your immune system how to recognize a threat, in this case, a virus or bacteria. The vaccine also helps strengthen your immune system, the way exercise builds your muscles. And just like how coaches can train you with different types of exercises, there are different types of vaccines available to help you. I see. So thanks to vaccines, your immune system, now smarter, is trained to help prevent an actual infection. Now I understand that even a healthy immune system needs help to prevent infections. Glad that was helpful. When it comes to your health, every question is a good question. Ask your doctor or pharmacist about vaccinations today. So um, as you see, a lot of the times uh, explaining how vaccines work, um, it's easier to paint a picture. So saying something like it works like a coach, right? It trains your body uh, for like, just like a coach would train you with different types of exercises. So do different types of vaccines in preventing certain diseases. Some of the other um, uh, questions that we get, some of the, the concerns that we have is around vaccine types. Um, a lot of people in the community don't know that there's actually uh, four main types of vaccines. As you can see here, some contain uh, live germs that have been weakened, like the live attenuated vaccines. Um, inactivated vaccines uh, have the germs that are grown and then treated. Uh, killed and treated. Um, and you have your protein-based vaccines that uses pieces of the protein from the germ. And of course, our mRNA vaccines that use that genetic material that codes part of the germ. So there's different types. A lot of the times you say, oh, you know, they're injecting me with the with the virus. And in reality, it's, it's not technically true um, every time, right? So making sure that your community knows uh, and they're aware and explaining to them in, in a way that they are able to understand and that they're comfortable with the information provided is so important. So how are vaccines developed? Um, another question that we get is, you know, the safety, especially around COVID-19 and everything that happened with the pandemic. Um, what is the development of the vaccine? And in reality, developing a vaccine, it, it is a rigorous process. And here's a short clip on uh, some of that information as well. I know vaccines are part of staying healthy, but I wonder how they're tested for safety. Great question. The vaccine approval process is a lot like running a marathon. At the starting line, there's a lot of vaccines hoping to go the distance, but it's easier said than done to meet the high standards. They need to reach milestone after milestone to get to the finish line for approval. For example, the vaccines need to be tested in many phases for effectiveness, dosing, and safety. And we'll need lots of different types of volunteers for this. What's a lot? Thousands, sometimes tens of thousands. That is a lot. 
And the vaccines that didn't perform the best in those tests? They don't make it to the finish line. The ones that did pass the test still have to be carefully evaluated by public health regulators or outside experts. Wow, I didn't know getting a vaccine approved was such a long road. So long that even once the vaccines are approved, we're still monitoring their safety over time. It's great to know that there are strict guidelines in place for vaccine safety. Glad to hear. When it comes to your health, every question is a good question. Ask your doctor or pharmacist about vaccinations today. I know. So because we're going into respiratory season, and I know uh, lots of people are getting ready to be with a lot of family, being indoors, it's important that we know that um, for these uh, next few months, really even going into early spring, it's important that they are aware of some of the risk of these uh, diseases like COVID-19, pneumococcal pneumonia, and RSV virus. We're gonna go over this uh, fairly quickly. Um, I know uh, most of you work in the vaccine space um, and are probably have heard of COVID fatigue by now, but um, just to make sure that your communities are aware that it, the virus has not left us, uh, it's still here. So some of the, the symptoms can range from mild to severe to possible. Uh, they can include fever, chills, cough, uh, shortness of breath, fatigue, muscle or body aches, nausea, vomiting, uh, loss of taste. Uh, some people, of course, are at increased uh, risk of getting very sick or dying from COVID-19 because of where they live or work or because they can't get health care. So um, this includes a lot of the people in racial and ethnic minority groups. Uh, the CDC does recommend that everyone six months and older get a, a newer vaccine. And uh, sorry uh, for the date here. The newest COVID-19 vaccine uh, has been approved in early September, and it should be available now in um, your local um, pharmacies, but always, always talk to your provider about uh, getting a vaccination. So for pneumococcal pneumonia uh, is a potentially serious bacterial lung disease. So for older adults especially um, are at the greatest risk for illness and death. Uh, some of the symptoms include chest pain when you cough, chills, cough with or without mucus, fever, low oxygen levels, shortness of breath. Um, this one, uh, the CDC recommends pneumococcal vaccinations for adults 65 or uh, 19 with certain underlying uh, medical conditions or risk factors. And then our respiratory syncytial virus, so RSV um, is something that a lot of people uh, in the community will say, oh, isn't that just for babies? <laughs> but in reality, uh, respiratory syncytial virus is highly contagious virus um, that usually ca cause mild cold-like symptoms, but RSV can also cause severe illness in some people. Uh, a misperception uh, about RSV, like I mentioned, is that it's only for babies, but older adults can be at risk of getting very sick with RSV as well. Um, and you see some of the symptoms here. It could be, you know, there's kind of like cold-like symptoms, but uh, the CDC does recommend adults 60 years and, old, and older may receive a single dose of RSV vaccine based on the discussion with the patient, of course. Um, and also the CDC does recommend a vaccination for uh, pregnant persons at 32 to 36 week gestation uh, using um, a seasonal administration. So September to January um, in most of the United States for the prevention of RSV in infants from birth through six months. So this is the, the maternal RSV. So certain medical condition impacts some groups more than others. And I don't have to tell this to this audience. I'm sure you all work with a lot of communities that um, low-income Americans face significantly higher rates of respiratory disease. Hispanics are twice as likely to visit a, an emergency department for asthma as compared to non-Hispanic whites. Um, so as you can see, certain medical conditions that our communities already suffer with um, can make some of these respiratory uh, diseases a lot worse for them. So being prepared is paramount. 
So how do they help protect you from respiratory disease? Of course, staying up to date with your vaccinations. They help train your immune system. Um, vaccination is one of the best ways to do that. And then some viruses like COVID-19 continue to evolve and change. Um, a lot of the questions in the community are like, you know, why so many vaccines? What are we doing with this? And, and um, it's good to always explain that uh as the bio continued to evolve, COVID-19 vaccines have been peri per periodically updated in response to the virus evolution. So uh, making sure that they're aware that it's not the same uh, variant that it was before. There's always some, uh, the as the virus mutates or changes, uh, so it has uh, to change. So we have to change vaccine as well or update it. So um, a lot of the questions around vaccine cost. Um, this is very particular to the person or the community. So this is always a hard question to answer. I know that the bridge program ended in August. So that was a big blow for, for communities and um, people working in public health. Um, but most people that do have insurance should continue to pay zero out of pocket costs for COVID-19 vaccines. And then if you um, have insur insurance, including uh, Medicare or Medicaid, your pneumococcal pneumonia and RSV vaccinations may be available at no additional cost. So, um, of course, we have, and I know that we'll talk a little bit about the Vaccines for Children's uh, program here in a minute, but um, for more questions, you can always read the CDC's website around uh, vaccines for, uh, for children. And then availability, of course, healthcare provider, uh, would be my first suggestion to talk to your healthcare provider um, to find, to see if they have it in their clinic or if uh, a local health center or a nearby pharmacy, that's always a good ways to start. You can also learn more about eligibility um, at vaxassist.com. Uh, I encourage you to check out that website. And I will pass it over to Paulina. Thank you. Thank you so much, Zelmi. And I hope that that was really helpful to hear a little more about, again, the vaccine development process and what that looks like, but also just understanding what the respiratory season looks like. So again, we want to encourage any questions you have, whether it's about the vaccine development process, the timeline, respiratory season, how to answer questions that maybe you're hearing from the community. We want to hear those questions so we can help you navigate the questions that you're getting in your community as well. So with that, I'm going to pass the floor to our next amazing panelist and speaker, Madeline Ramirez from Vaccinate Your Family. So Madeline, the floor is yours. Thank you, Paulina, and thank you again for this opportunity. So again, my name is Marlene Ramirez. I am with Vaccinate Your Family, and I'm going to be talking about empowering trusted messengers to increase vaccine confidence and access. Okay, but before that, I wanted to share, um, I wanted to share some history about Vaccinate Your Family. Okay, so um, Vaccinate Your Family is an organization that has been working in the immunization space for over three decades. And we are one of the only groups to work at the center of the vaccine ecosystem. Through our deep understanding of immunization and public health issues, we are able to keep our partners, policymakers, and the public informed, empower partners to educate others, and activate communities on key policy needs. Our mission is to protect people of all ages from vaccine preventable diseases. And so vaccinating with confidence, okay? We know that community work is a huge part of vaccinating with confidence, but how do we empower the on the ground messengers in Latino communities to increase their vaccine confidence? The model that we see on the slide is one that the CDC has used this strategy to reinforce confidence in COVID-19 vaccines. So the general strategy 
is to build trust, empower health care uh, personnel like community health workers, nurses, staff, physicians, basically those that are involved in the care of the individual and to engage communities and individuals. So at Vaccinate Your Family, we created two community-based programs that support this model. The Vaccination Community Navigator Program, which is also known as the VCN, and the Squad Program, which I will be talking about in the next couple of slides. So let's start off with the Vaccination Community Navigator Program, also known as the VCN Program. By creating the VCM program in partnership with Dia de la Mujer Latina, we were able to work with trusted messengers in communities and provide them with training and resources to empower the work that they're doing within their communities. The VCM program consists of four pillars. These include a four-part curriculum, quarterly community of practice meetings, an online community, and an in-person facilitation where the VCM can be taught in an in-classroom setting. But before I share a little bit more information about the VCM program, I wanted to share a little bit of its background. So this is the first of its kind. What I mean is that this was built by community health workers for community health workers. We, um, we launched this program in March through April of 2022 in Texas, where we worked with over 200 promotores de salud, community health workers, and community health worker instructors. Based on the impact that we saw that we had in Texas, we decided to nationally launch it in February of 2023. So let's go ahead and talk about those four pillars that the VCN consists of. The first pillar is the online community. This is a four-part curriculum that covers various vaccine-related topics, including vaccination history, vaccine basics, debunking information, and addressing social determinants of health and vaccination barriers. Now, the curriculum is fully bilingual, meaning that it's in English and Spanish. It is available online, and it's basically work at your own pace. It is free and open to everyone. All that is needed to access the curriculum is to create an account using the link that we will be providing in the chat. Now, a little bit about the program. Um, we did launch or we did conduct a post Curse, um, course survey where we got feedback from the participants and we were able to find out that about 92 to 96 percent of the participants um, said that the that um, this curriculum increased their confidence in their ability to talk about vaccines and connect people to vaccination services. We were also able to hear from community health workers in which they shared they shared um, what they were seeing in this in their communities and what the curriculum did for them. Now let's go ahead and talk about the second pillar of the VCM program. Now, this is the online community. The online community consists of community health workers and anyone wanting to network. The goal is to stay connected, ask questions, and share resources. For example, um, I did post on the online community this webinar opportunity to invite its participants. Again, this community is available in both English and Spanish, and it is a great way to connect to resources and share upcoming events as well. Now, to become part of the online community, um, we will also be placing a link in the chat where you can join. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the third pillar to the VCM program, which are our virtual community of practice meetings. The community of practice meetings cover timely topics of interest for community health workers, and it is a safe space for them, for community health workers and attendees to share best practices. Now, these meetings are held quarterly in English with live interpretation for Spanish speakers. Our next meeting will be December 5th, and our topic will be community health workers and healthcare providers strengthening partnerships. To register for the COP meeting, on December 5th, we will also be including the link in the chat. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about the fourth pillar for the VCM program, which is our in-person facilitation. 
Now, because we recognize that technology may be an access issue for the VCN curriculum, this pillar is focused on collaborating with partners to, um, to teach the VCN curriculum in an in-classroom setting for underserved populations. So this year we completed cohort number one. We were able to help seven organizations bring the VCN curriculum for an in-person facilitation. We had a total of 23 facilitators nationwide that helped reach about 450 community health workers. And I'm proud to share that Latinx Voices was part of our cohort number one. Now, what did we do? Um, we offered tech support, which consisted of a facilitator's guide and financial assistance to help cover printing, lunch, and a space to rent to conduct the VCN curriculum in an in-classroom setting. Now, we are currently um, learning from our lessons from cohort number one to move forward with future cohorts. Now, once we are ready for cohort number two, we will be sharing the application process in our online community. Okay, so um, I've talked a lot about empowering the on the ground messengers, but now I would like to take some time to talk about the advocates. In Latino communities, we know that storytelling plays a major role. At Vaccinate Your Family, we understand the power of storytelling and develop the SQUAD program, which stands for Squaring Up Against Disease. Many people became complacent about vaccine preventable diseases. And these stories that our SQUAD members share illustrate just how serious they can be. And even, and, and that's even for healthy children and adults. Now in this slide, we're able to see some of our squad members. And in our website, you can view their stories. So these stories are about, um, these stories are ones of loss and survivorship. We know that again, storytelling is important because it can change hearts and minds, meaning that it can change vaccination behavior. So we definitely invite you to visit the link that we'll be providing in the chat so that you can go ahead and view our squad members um, stories. So I wanna share a little bit more about the information about our squad program and what it is that we do. So in our squad program, we identify advocates and connect with them by conducting community outreach. Once we connect with members, we provide training under Vaccinate University for advocates to feel that they have the training needed to practice advocacy. Through storytelling, squad advocates share their stories and engage with communities. Squad advocates can share their stories in speaking engagements, meeting with, um, their, with policymakers, and or by participating in conferences. Um, at VYF, we provide continuing support to advocates to create sustainable relationships with our VYF staff and our squad advocates. Now, to close, I would like to invite everyone to go to our website to view our VCN and squad programs at vaccinateyourfamily.org. I also wanted to take this opportunity to invite everyone to participate in Vaccinate Your Family's Respiratory Rumors Alert campaign. As respiratory disease season begins, um, Vaccinate Your Family is launching the hashtag viral truth campaign to combat misinformation surrounding flu, COVID, RSV, and winter wellness. This initiative will equip trusted messengers with reliable, quick responses to debunk common myths that spread rapidly during this time. That's New Year family would like to invite everyone to join us and our immunization partners, ensuring the importance of busting these myths by posting on social media. Now, we will also be sharing this campaign on the chat, and this is a campaign that is fully in English and Spanish, and we definitely invite you all to join us. And with that, I wanna say thank you for this opportunity. Thank you so much, Madeline. And I just want to say as well, when she mentioned the VCN program, Latinx really did have just such an amazing opportunity to be able to connect with community health workers here in the Rio Grande Valley. 
which is actually where I'm based. So I'm not sure if there's any RGBers here in the call right now, but um, it was such an amazing opportunity. And so Madeline, a big thank you to you and to your team at Vaccinate Your Family. It's always just such a pleasure to be able to partner and collaborate with you all, especially in efforts like this to ensure that promotores, community health workers, and our trusted messengers continue to bring back the resources to families. So thank you so much. And so this brings us to that exciting time of the webinar where we're able to kind of come back, regroup, and really answer your questions.